Asia Wilson, Tiffany Hayes, and head coach Becky Hammond speak after game one win against the Seattle Storm. Check out the video. We just we came out a step slow. I have no idea why. Defensively and offensively, we looked like we were running in mud out there. Second or two late, and I thought in the second half they just kind of buckled down. And we, once we get stops, we know we're off to the races. Especially these two studs. I mean, in a good way, of course. Horses, stallions. Um, but we, we're best when we run out of our defense, and we, we put a couple lineups out there that were super fast. And so. When we're fast and active defensively and just disruptive, um, we know we can get out to the other end. AJ, I'll follow that up as well. Just what kind of clicked in, in the fourth quarter? You mentioned physicality as well. Just over 12. Yeah, I mean, we just buckled down. Uh, we, like I said, we understood the assignment and knew what, is, what it was going to take. I think we saw in the first half that this isn't going to be easy. This is the playoffs. This isn't a regular season game. So things we would do in regular season, we have to like literally times 10 it in the playoffs. And I think it kind of woke us up. They kind of punched us in the mouth first half. But second half, I think we just kind of figured it out. And it just clicked with us on the defensive end. We have to buckle down. Like it's no if, ands, or buts about it. That's where we can then fuel our offense. So we just started to lock in more. Uh, turned up our physicality. Becky yelled at us in the locker room. Obviously, that w woke us up. Um, and then we just kind of took it personal. And I and I love that we can do that in, in game and make that adjustment. Uh, yeah, this question for uh, Tiffany. This you've had a lot of experience, and it looked like it tonight because mm -hmm. you really needed to turn it up. You did. I wonder if you could talk about that. And then Asia, if you could just talk about what it meant to have mm -hmm. the champions. Yeah. Um. I think, yeah, you said it, uh, having a lot of experience, plus being here uh, surrounded by people with experience, lots of playoff experience, lots of winning experience. Um, and I'm just grateful to be surrounded by that because even if I fall off the track a little bit, I have them to pull me right back up. Um, and I just want to shout out my mom is here too. She's, she was my coach uh, all throughout growing up, and she's never flown before, and she flew out here for the playoff game. So. I'm glad she came to the call. But yeah, that's awesome. That yeah. me a little bit. That's awesome. <laughs> and I mean, just to go off kind of what Tiff said, the same way she says that we kind of reel her in, she reels us in. She gets us going. Her energy is there always. It picks us up. I mean, that's the that's our game changer. She's our she's really one of our X factors when it comes to just when we need anything, whether it's a stop, whether it's energy, whether it's a bucket, uh, we turn to Tiff, and she understands that. And it's crazy that you say that because. Before Tiff even really got on the court, we went to dinner at Mastro's. And I remember her saying that her mom's never flown and she was just trying to figure out when she could be able to come out here. And I'm so glad that she was able to come out here to see her daughter really shine bright under these bright lights. Uh, because that's what it's truly all about. This is cool, this is nice. But like we have families that we love dearly, that that's what fuels us, that's our why. So it means a lot to me that you had that opportunity to share with your mother. Cause I remember us talking about that. So that's a big moment. So I mean, she needs to come and sit in our locker room every single day. <laughs> Another dinner on Masters. So. There it is. No, oh, period. Say that gets me out too short. Um, <laughs> would you would you say at halftime? Would you yeah? You can't tell the secrets in playoffs. We'll tell you all. <laughs> Next question. Next question. Oh, <laughs> I've got to listen to my boss. <laughs> Follow <laughs> orders. Um you know, yesterday you were talking about the resilience and, and being a tough-minded team. Um, is this is this an example of that? Is it, you know, of a of a team that's kind of been through long runs that when things aren't going the right way, there's no. Yeah, I mean, we like I said, I'm not quite sure why. Maybe we were a little, I don't know, maybe too many analyzing the game too much, and we just weren't just playing, um, and. At, the, at this point of the season, you have to know one of our best plays was the no play. Like, don't call a play because you're so scouted. What they can't do is when you make reads and you cut for each other and you scream for each other because these are basketball actions that are going to give something up because it puts the offense or the defense in a, in a dilemma. You got to choose A or B. 
And when they go A, we go with B. Or if they go with B, we go with A, whatever. Um, but the the stuff that this team has been through, and I mean, I don't know the teams that Tip's always been on, but since I've been here, you know, this has been our most tumultuous season. And for me, the resiliency, like I told them, if we were going to crack and fold, we would have done that about a month ago. Sure. So we, we can take a hit. Um, and we could throw a hit, but the key with champions is being able to take a hit and get back up and keep moving forward. And that's Rocky Balboa, if any of you didn't know that. But do you know who that is? Yes, I know okay. who that is. <laughs> You're one of the older ones, I forget. I know who that is too. That's the okay. man that go like this. <laughs> up the stairs. Um, no, but uh, the look, at the end of the day, I thought, mm -hmm. you know, it's a win and we ground it. Like, it's just not going to be easy. We, we grinded that one out, and that's how it's going to be. I mean, I, I know you guys don't want me to say that, but Asia shooting two free throws. Stop. We talked about this. I know. I have to, though. No. No, you don't. Next and Jackie question. shot zero. No. Next question. <laughs> Somebody. Jesus Christ. Anybody but Becky, please. Okay, to that point, though, about grinding out this win, right? Uh, what does this mean for you and your teammates, right, knowing that, you go through, through some adversity from the offensive standpoint tonight, you know, off the facility in the second half. And then you got your teammates like Tip and others that can pick it up yeah. and uh, and actually, uh, you know, and get, basically help you out and get this team to a win. Yeah, I mean, it's playoff basketball. It's one of those moments where a lot of the stars are going to cancel out. A lot of things are going to happen, but it's the it's the ones that people least expect that shine the brightest. And that's what I love about it, because it's not just going to be one person. It's going to take all of us, one through 12. And I think you saw that tonight, and it's never going to be easy. And I feel like the game ones are always really hard. We lost game one last year or the our year before, year. Yeah, our, first, our first year. It's hard, uh, even though you're home and it's everything. They're, uh, Seattle's coming in with a completely different mindset. And so we have to understand how to – Focus on us and not get caught up in a lot of the extra stuff. And like Becky was saying, I think we overanalyzed a lot of stuff because we were just waiting, waiting, and then it caused us not to just dictate actions. And we were just being, just reacting. So in these moments, we have to just stay within our system and our identity and trust that it's going to get us the win and trust one another. And I think that's what you saw tonight. It's like, we didn't fold. We didn't look at each other. We didn't get into a hole. We just really just steady started chipping away and understood our defensive assignments. Tiffany, you mentioned your mom was your coach. What was the biggest piece of advice uh, that you learned from her during that time that you take into your professional career now? Um, she always used to tell me that uh, I had to always go 120% because she didn't want none of the other parents saying that she was playing me just because I was her daughter. So I had to be 10 times as good as everybody else <laughs> on the court. So that's why I'm always going as hard as I can on the court, trying to make sure I'm doing all the right things because I get that from her. So, yep, that's where I go from. That is 100% yeah, her. Man. She's still playing at 120%. Oh, okay. All the time. Well, that was great. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, Becky, you kind of talked about it tonight. You said sometimes the best call to play, or the best play to call, rather, is no play. And you said earlier this season as well that during those rough, rough patches, you don't necessarily want to have to use those timeouts. When you reference that start and you reference the way that it kind of began, you opened this press conference by saying you didn't really know why it started that way. That second quarter, that chemistry between Chelsea and Alicia, do you feel like because this has been the most tumultuous season that this will be a season where you kind of lean on those veterans in those key spots a little bit more than you have in previous seasons? Well, like I said, I think there's a tremendous amount of trust that we've built in that locker room. Um, I thought AC coming in, especially in the second half, the defense, I mean, Neca had 13 at halftime and – you know, AC came in and did a great job there getting on the glass on us in the, in the first half. We were just a step slow. And so there's a lot of different people that I can call on and that I trust out there. Um, they've just proven to me who they are. And so when it gets hard, I'm never hitting the panic mode. I might be hitting the angry mode, but I'm not hitting the panic mode. Um, you know, because I just, my expectation is probably the highest of these young ladies. And I expect their best and I want to pull the best out of them. So I try to hold them accountable and be as honest with them as possible. I thought our defense sucked in the first half and I thought it was amazing in the second half. It's just, it is what it is. And, um, you know, we, we know also it helps our offense. That's the biggest thing. It, it, when we don't have to go against a set defense for, uh, 20 minutes, that, that helps. So 
you know, when we really got out was when these guys were out running and pushing and playing out of our offense. That's when we really started kind of cooking and start to get a separation. Well, first of all, climb back into the lead and then get some separation. Two more questions, Alan and Michael. Oh, thank you. Uh, you have a two time to win the WNBA champion team here with, with four Olympians. They're all six, six, six. Uh, you have six all, all yeah. together, <laughs> and with, including Tiffany. How does a team with, with all this talent? Just pick up a Tiffany Hayes, like uh, I'm a fly, and just just reload so quickly. I mean, they, just, they mentioned, you know, she's uh, the X factor, and you know, how does a team, you know, with this kind of talent, just you know, pick up a Tiffany Hayes? Well, I think it's more of a tribute of who she is, because mm -hmm. um, not everybody's willing to come off the bench. She's an all she's been an all star. She's been a main core piece. Probably never came off the bench, ever. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's a different. <laughs> I think it's more of a question for her. I was just going to shoot no, my yeah, shot, to be quite me. honest. I was just going to shoot my shot. I'm like, the worst she could say is no to us. Literally, what you texted me. I was like, we're going to, like, I mean, I remember having the conversation. I was like, well, what about Tiffany Hayes? I've always been a fan of hers, by the way. I don't know if I've told you that, but I've always loved the way she plays because she's a dog. Um, and I, you never have to coach effort with her. Mm -hmm. And um, that's, a, that's a huge luxury as a coach, that I don't have to coach your try hard factor. And um, she let us up also in the past. So I was like, you know, and, and I thought her wording when she said she was going to retire was very specific. And it told me a lot. Her statement said a lot. And I'll keep that to myself. But when she said how she was retiring and, and she didn't ever say she was from basketball. So I was like, you know what? She's still probably in great shape. She's over there playing. So I was like, let's go. I want to know what you're talking about. <laughs> Because Tiff was, Tiff was gone. I was gizzing. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take yeah, later. Well, I will. Yeah, I don't want to say anything for them. But I, Chill yeah. Chill so I was like, I mean, if you guys know me, I might fail a thousand times, but it's not going to be for lack of trying. I'm right. going to try. And so uh, well, I was ecstatic when she just said yes to take our, our phone call. Um, I just think she just gives us such a different gear. And I love that. But I'll tell you later. Yeah. Final question. Yeah, Asia, it's just, um, you know, obviously it was a tough first half. Man, it was ugly, wasn't it? But you, <laughs> oh, I think you're 15 points in the third quarter. I think it's the most you had in the fourth, third quarter. I just, um, I just wonder if you sort of talk about that, you know, maybe yeah. what's going on in your mind at halftime and just how ready you were for that third quarter. Yeah, that first half was ugly. Joy. Um, that's just the way the game goes. You know, the basketball guys does a funny way of showing me. Uh, sometimes you just got to get it out the mud. And I love doing that because it keeps my mind going. I think my teammates just continue to, like, never let me doubt myself. So, um, and I sometimes do doubt myself. And uh, they always pick me up. So I just kept, they kept feeding me the ball. And then that's when I just started to calm down. I think I was rushing a lot in the first half because I'm like, oh, it's there. Let me just go ahead and tag. This, this is it. Um, but once in the second half, the game kind of just settled down for me and I really started to dissect the defense and what they were doing. Um, and then that was kind of when I got rocking and rolling. But it is what it is. I'm, I'm just happy that I didn't stop shooting. And I'm also happy that my teammates still trusted me with the basketball. Because shooting the way I did, I would have be been like, girl, go in that corner. Yeah. <laughs> and then on that thanks very Period. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hideous. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. See you in the next video, Hoop Life Family.